What's the biggest fail date you have ever had? Story one. Day one. Friend introduces his female employee to me. She is very attractive. I hope this will go well. Day two. She somehow got my mail address, phone number, and my home address. Occam's razor, friend probably told her. I don't mind, but I am not too fond of other people giving out my contact info. But hey, cute girl that is really into me. Happy. Day three. She invites me to a tuxedo party and keeps talking about how fun it is going to be. Sure, why not? Sounds fun. The first two drinks are free. Day four, tuxedo party. She keep pulling me around to talk to different people all the time. She smokes about one pack of cigarettes every hour and insists that I keep her company while she is out smoking. I don't breathe and think it smells terrible, but keep being the gentleman and keep her company. We end up at my place. That night, nothing special happens. Day five, we wake up. I fix her breakfast, hang out her clothes to get the breathe out, turn on the TV for her, and then snuggle down next to her, and we talk for hours. We kiss, and she exclaims that me waiting to give her a kiss until she is sober and just lying in bed is one of the most romantic things she has ever experienced. I think that this will be a wonderful relationship. Day six, nine. Since we now work at the same place, we meet and talk every day, and everything is fucking sunshine and butterflies for a few days. Close relationship marathon every night. Slept at most two hours in total. Day 10, 11. We have been together almost constantly for one and a half week, and I feel I want to be alone for a while. Suddenly getting a girlfriend was a huge deal for me, so I asked her and explained that I definitely want to be with her, but I just want a few days to process this. She's heartbroken and angrily explained that as a couple, we are supposed to be together all the time. Taken aback, I agree to her reasoning, and we keep being together for another few days. She calls me in the middle of the night, telling me that she went out with her friends and want close relationship right now. We had close relationship, which turned as she fell asleep. Day 12, 20. We're getting to know each other more and more. Suddenly, she tells me that she is three weeks late. I'm now more or less in complete shock, definitely not ready to have a baby. We discuss it and decide that instead of worrying, we'll see what will happen the next few days. She call in the middle of the night, crying that she is such a terrible girlfriend who wakes me up in the middle of the night. She offered to give me a BJ as an apology. I say it is not necessary. Ten minutes later, she knocks on my door and asks me to keep her company while she smokes. She then insists that I get a BJ. I did not regret it. Best ever, but still weird. Day 21, 25. False alarm, not pregnant. I am overjoyed, but she seems a bit down. I ask her what's wrong, and boom. She starts crying like someone had forced her to play music on instruments made out of her family. She had apparently been assaulted with a stick when she was 12 years old, and due to the damage, she only had 15% chance to become pregnant. I really have no idea how to respond to this except, ah, oh, that's terrible. Why would someone do something like that? Hug her and just let her cry as much as she wanted. She felt a lot better, and we had celebratory close relationship, but somehow it felt very hollow. Close relationship nonetheless. Day 26, 30. I'm starting to get really uncomfortable with not being able to be alone for other than an hour before breakfast and while sleeping. I tell her this and she gets really pissy. I give in and we end up watching the close relationship in the city movie three times in a row. I felt my brain melt away the first 10 minutes, but she loved the movie so much. Lots more close relationship than one day she wants to go and shop for shoes with her friends and she wants me to be with her. I say no, she gets pissy. I give in. I sat in the same shoe shop for six hours while they tried on shoes. I had to judge if black, pink, blue, green, leather, cotton, lace, ribbons. No ribbons, low heel, high heel, straps, no straps, footprint marks, sizes, prices, last year, this year, popular now, popular in six months, tacky, not tacky, shiny, and on and on and on, which shoes were the best. They disagreed with everything I said. Day 31. I decide that I am definitely not ready for a relationship of this magnitude. I tell her this, she cries, gets angry, cries, blames me for not trying hard enough, asking what was wrong, then invites me to go to the zoo with her. I explain that I'm not ready for a relationship, and I'm sorry if she felt let on and hurt. She will never get over me. Day 33, she found a new boyfriend, complete with the subordinate dog look and behavior. I spent the weekend playing Fallout 3 and eating pizza. BWB. Story 2. Part 1. My new girlfriend has a story about a fantastic date she had. The guy picked her up and they went out to dinner. He sat at the table he always sat at, presumably where he ate alone every day after work. She sat down across the table from him, and he tells her, in a serious tone, I didn't say you could sit there. She asks if he's serious, and he says yes, because that's his table he always sits at. Without any other explanation, they eat dinner at two different tables, sort of facing each other, but not talking. Part two, they went to a movie. He sat down, and she sat down next to him. He got up, slid one seat over, and sat down, leaving a buffer zone between them. She assumed he wanted to move closer to the center or something like that, so she moved over next to him again. This happened two more times until he finally stayed still. Two minutes left in the movie, after awkwardly waiting for someone to make some sort of move for an hour and a half, he put his arm around her. Uh, two minutes later, they leave and go back to his place. She asked him if he wanted to watch a movie there or something. 
Part three, they get to his place and she sits down on his couch. He then goes into his room, shuts the door, and goes to sleep. Luckily, she lived only a few blocks away and couple walk home. By the way, my girlfriend is absolutely gorgeous, easy to get along with, and sweet as hell. I feel sorry for that guy, although I don't know him. I don't think he was being an intentional banana. I just think he's socially awkward and clueless. Story three, I took a girl on a second date. The first had gone well enough, so I took her to a play. I took her to see a live version of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. She left halfway through because, as it turned out, she was a homophobe. I stayed for the rest of the show. It was really well done. But I still felt like a bit old loser. Edit, I know I'm not actually a loser. She was a stupid homophobe. I'm just saying that the crowd saw her storming out, and then I sat there. They didn't know why she left. Plus, Actors Express in Atlanta in 2004, Ish did a great job with Hedwig and I wasn't leaving in the middle. Story four. So I'd been cracking onto this amazing girl from work. It was all going pretty well, and we were getting on like a house on fire. We organized to go and get a meal or something after work on the Friday, so all was looking good. However, come Friday, it got to about two hours before we were supposed to meet up when I got a text from her saying, um, there's probably something I should tell you. Workmate's name has invited himself along. He's refusing to take the hint. FML. This guy was notorious for third wheeling when there was a girl he liked involved. And this guy liked every girl. He was like an awkwardly gimpy bear in heat. Decided to wander on down anyway, only to find him waiting with her, while she was clearly ignoring him. So I took him to one side and explained that we'd planned for it to be just us that evening. To which he replied, well, plans change sometimes. What are we up to? Needless to say, the date bombed thanks to his golem-like presence the entire night. And we never bothered to arrange a second one. Funnily enough, he tried to do the same when I was going on a date with my now girlfriend. Turns out I could have just told him to sling your flipping hook before I cut you, and it would have worked fine. Well, briefly, he still texts and calls the wench asking to meet up. Story 5. I was invited to a comedy show at our university by this guy. Turns out he got the time wrong and we showed up an hour after it had ended. So I, trying to make the most of an awkward situation, invited him to a party a few of my friends in a fraternity were throwing. We get there and I realize that he had been rejected from this fraternity two years previously. There was still a lot of awkward tension between him and 50% of the party. Luckily, the party was busted about 15 minutes after we got there, but my date had still managed to get extremely drunk somehow. It was still pretty early in the night, so he invited me back to his room to watch a movie. He literally spent the entire movie saying all the punchlines before they happened, completely ruining every joke for me. About halfway through the movie, he casually slipped a hand under my shirt and just sat there cupping my boob. He didn't try to kiss me or anything, he just sat there with his hand massaging my tit until I told him it was weird. After the movie, he walked me home and kissed me goodnight. It was awful. I told him it wasn't any more awkward than the rest of the date. We didn't go out again. Story 6. Met a girl at an October fest party. Needless to say, we all had a lot of beer to drink. We ended up talking all night. Hours upon hours of interesting conversation. I asked her for her number and suggested we go out sometime later in the week, and she thought it was an awesome idea. Later in the week, I buy a nice bottle of wine, take her to a small acoustic set in an indoor zen garden that gets rented out. Things were going perfect. She laughed at all my jokes, and we were hitting it off. She mentions her little brother and I ask how old he is, five years older than me. I laugh and ask if he's figuratively her little brother. No, he's her actual little brother, and she's eight years older than me. She asks how old I am, I tell her, and I just watched as her smile was washed off her face. I tried shrugging it off and continuing past the snag, but she became very uninterested while talking. I ask her if she's okay, and she says she has to go to the washroom. I totally think to myself, she's totally not coming back, but laugh it off thinking I'm crazy. I get a text a few minutes later saying she had a family emergency and she had to go. I called her on it saying... Well, I hope everything works out, and if it's because of the age difference, I get it. No hard feelings. But the bad person never texted me back. Total banana move. I'm in the beginning of my 20s, so I guess that's why it was such a deal to her. Anyways, I had practically an entire bottle of wine left, and the music had just started when I got the text, so I stayed, drank, and enjoyed the show. Afterwards, I met some people who thought my story was hilarious and bought me a few drinks at a bar around the corner. Story 7. Five years out of high school. I asked a girl I had a crush on way back in high school to come stay with me in Toronto for a weekend. We grew up in London. She took the bus up and we hung out all day. I showed her the sights, took her out for a nice dinner, eventually returning to my place to watch a movie she had brought with her, short bus. Finally end of the night, and we're heading to bed, brush our teeth, etc., get into bed and snuggle up. I figure at this point, deal sealed, so I lean in for a kiss and she flies back and yells, What the hell are you doing? Confused, I asked, Um, what do you mean, what am I doing? She replies, I thought you knew. I respond, thought I knew what exactly. Finally, she blurts out, I'm boy. Still had to hang out with her all the next day. So awkward. Story eight, out with a girl I was friends with for a few months. 
She is easily a 9.2 out of 10. We get drinks together occasionally, but keep it friendly. This one night, she is friendlier than usual. She wants to dance with me, usually doesn't dance at all, so we salsa a bit. Then she grinds on me. We end up going to her place after the bar closes because she wants to watch her favorite show with some company for once. We are there for an hour or so talking and drinking some more. Eventually, she just looks at me and says, why the fudge haven't you kissed me yet? To which I reply, I don't know. I thought about it. She grabs me and kisses me. Definitely not a friend kiss. After, she looks at me and says, your turn. My reply, I just thought you just wanted to watch Golden Girls. Story 9. Went on a date with a friend of my cousin. We went to see a movie, Lethal Weapon 3, and she bought a large popcorn and loaded it with that fake butter-flavored nonsense. I realized on the ride home that the butter flavor does not agree with me. I dropped her off at her house, and as soon as I got in my car, I couldn't hold it anymore. I cow my pants so bad that I actually rose up about two inches. And as I'm sitting there, she comes running back over to the car to give me another kiss goodnight. All the while, the cow is dripping out of the legs of my shorts all over the floor. She sticks her head in the window, and when she smells it, she gags and proceeds to puke in my lap. Never did get a second date. Story 10. I went on a date with a mutual acquaintance who seemed okay from the few times we'd met before. During the actual date, dinner, and drinks, he probably said about 10 words to me, and he kept laughing and smirking like he was enjoying some inside joke. I promise I'm not insane or overtly weird, so I still don't know what the fudge he found so funny. Toward the end of the night, he tried to arrange a kiss by saying, I bet you couldn't handle my mouth. Wow, a full sentence. A full, creepy, awkward sentence. I made the Jackie Chan WTF face, said something about work early in the morning, and peeled out of there. Story 11. I'm a fabulous homo hunka dude. Blind date time, right? I flipping hate this cow. I really do. As much, if not more, than my lovely straight flying counterparts. Blind dates feel like they're for people who got sick of being tortured by internet dating site creeps and decided to level up to real-life awkward hell. So I suppose it wasn't totally blind. Friend gave me this guy's digits, and for giggles, whilst tipsy, I texted him and introduced myself. He was into it. We set our first date and proceed over the next week or so to text, not frequently, per se, but a couple times a day. I decide to take him to my favorite pub to hang out over a night of good beer and delicious eats. He's not a bad-looking guy, but I'm a stickler for eyes and notice right off that he has trouble looking at anything but his own reflection in the glass of the window next to us or his own fingernails. I have no problem with insecurity, but he wasn't insecure. He was 12, not there. Well, whatever. I'm still at my favorite bar, so yay. Beer and grub. Then he says, I flipping hate this place. Have you been here before? I'm sorry, I didn't. No, this is my first time and this place sucks. Oh, well, I come here pretty often. It's one of my favorite places. What kind of places do you... Well, you like sucky places. Uh -huh. I didn't realize. Okay, fine. I am now 100% checked out of this date. I sit back and try to make idle conversation to pass the time until our grub comes out and he decides to sweep everything onto the table next to us, plants his elbow down, and offers to arm wrestle me. In the middle of a classy Belgian pub, no. What? Arm wrestle me. No. Silence. We eat. He does this thing where he says something normal and then laughs at it with this wheezy self-indulgent <laughs> like nails on a chalkboard from hell. He is <laughs> at himself some more. We finish. We leave. I try to be a classy guy, even after checking out, and decide to walk him to his bus stop before I went to mine. Separate lines, thank God. All the while, he insists on walking four steps behind me. I kept trying to stop and let him catch up, but then he'd flipping stop too. Jesus Christ, what the hell. He also keeps asking, what did I do wrong? What don't you like about me? Can you tell me everything you don't like about me? I would date the guy I texted with, but not the guy that showed up. Story 12. This is probably too far down for anyone to see, but hell with it. Messaged this quirky hipster looking girl, and she messaged me back, and we set up a date. There were a few warning signs beforehand, the biggest of which was that she didn't have a car. She worked right next to where she lived, but most people need a car to go anywhere in Orlando. But she seemed quirky and nice, so let's give it a shot. Since I had to drive out to her side of town to get her, I let her choose a restaurant because I wasn't too familiar with the area. She chooses the most expensive flipping touristy restaurant, so not only are we, I, paying $40 a meal, the food is bland and not at all interesting. Whatever, that's what alcohol is for. We talk a bit and it's very stilted and boring conversation, but whatever, win some, lose some. I'm content to let the night end after this, but she wants to go to a bar. Specifically, she wants to go to a bar on my side of town, which is about a 45-minute drive from her area. So I'm weighing the fact that I'm not having a great time with this girl that I'd have to end up driving 45 minutes back to her house at the end of the night vs. the desire for beer. I made a very foolish decision. So we get the bar, and it's more of the same dead-eyed talk from earlier, but I happen to notice she keeps looking over her shoulder at a pair of guys at a table. After several times of her doing this, I finally ask what the deal is. She tells me that she's pretty sure that she went on a date with one of those guys last night. Oh, awesome. Terribly awkward coincidence, but hey, these things happen. No big deal. 
She then says she's going to go say hi to him and gets up and goes over to his table. At this point, I'm thinking, huh, that would be pretty rude if this was a date or something. Oh, wait, this was a date or something. Well, at least it was a bad date. Truthfully, I was going back and forth on trying to decide if it was really rude or really funny or both. But whatever, I can drink beer now. I am immune to social anxiety. Here's where the night goes from good to great. She comes back about 15 minutes later and says that we are going over to this guy's table to join he and his friend. Oh, all right then. So we go over and this guy, as anyone can predict, is sending some bad vibes my way. I totally understand. This girl he went out with is bringing some other guy to his table. That's a cow situation. But I'm trying to get across that this was in no way my idea. And he is welcome to the fruit of the lady's loins whenever he so desires. His friend is being a good friend to him and trying to stonewall me whenever possible during the conversation. For example, he was talking about his job as warehouse manager a lot and bragging about getting shipments out on time and how much responsibility, etc. Etc. He then, kind of smugly, asked what I do and I had to sheepishly say that I build training simulators for the U.S. Army. Oops. So this guy is not my best friend at the moment and I'm inwardly feeling really sorry for him but also laughing at the sheer Seinfeldian idiocy of this whole conglomeration. During the conversation, her attention turns this club across the street from the bar. Since she's not from this side of town, we all have the responsibility of telling her that it is not a very nice place, on the order of about two stabbings a month, and people like us, white, college-aged hipsters, are generally not viewed in a favorable light there. Well, her being who she is, these facts imbue in her the need for us all to go there right now. The other two guys are down, but I, who have already let this cow show get entirely too out of hand, have no desire to go. The guys, of course, are fine with this. The girl immediately gets serious and says, no, you're going, and gets up as if that's that. I smile politely and just say, nah, I'm not really feeling it tonight, but it's cool. You all can go. It'll be fun. She then delivers a sweet ultimatum. Okay, I am going to the bathroom. When I come back, we are all going to the club. And then she walks away. Yes, this girl, after everything else tonight, just ordered me to go to this place with her and these other guys. Hell with that. So I immediately empathize with these guys and apologize for how awkward this whole thing was. I said, however, that I'd be willing to do them a favor and let them, either both whatever, go take her wherever and continue their romance as long as they promised me they'd take her home. They agree. Awesome. Man negotiation. Man negotiation. She comes out and I let her know I wouldn't be joining them, but that her friend had graciously agreed to drive her home. She is very upset and says that she was really looking forward to it. You still get to go. I said, but I'm tired. Yes, that's it. I'm very tired, she sighs, gives me a hug, and I'm finally free. I make my way to my car, whistling as I go, but then I notice she still had her leftovers on my passenger seat. Well, I should be nice and return this. So in the final act of me being way too polite for my own good, I jog back quickly to give her the chicken or whatever. I don't even remember. She sees me coming back, and I cow you not, says, Ha, huh, I knew you couldn't resist. Maybe we'll let you come with us, but you have to apologize. I say I'm sorry and give her the chicken, and then I was off into the night before she could say another word. Story 13. About a year ago, my ex and I split up. We'd been together for almost three years. A few months after that one, if my good guy friends, not mutual friends with the ex, asked me out. I hadn't been out on a first date in a few years, so I went however I was reluctant. This guy had been one of my best friends since we were six, seven. The date went okay. We didn't do anything, i.e. touch, kiss, etc. He invited me back to record some songs with him. I accepted being as we were in a band a few years back. I sat down on his couch and he told me he loved me. And I said, well, duh, I love you too. And then he said he was in love with me, and he always has been, and went on a long rant with marriage and kids, and blah, blah, blah. And I told him I didn't feel that way. He threw himself on me in some psycho blackout rage and was choking me and kissing me, and everything started to go black. I need him as hard as I could in his nuts. I know it's a cheap shot, but I was close to blacking out. Slammed him on the ground and put one foot on his throat. He apologized, and I haven't talked to him since. Story 14. High school. The girl offered to pick me up because she had just gotten her driver's license and permission to use her parents' car. Cool with me, I like not driving. So she picks me up and about a mile from my place, a raccoon runs out and she obliterates it. I felt the thing thump hard right under my feet. So this chick's eyes go wide and she stares straight ahead silently for the next two miles until we get to a stoplight. So I decided to break the silence and said, poor Ricky, at which point she freaks the fudge out, screaming, crying, punching me. Finally, she just kicks me out of the car and burns rubber down the street for about a block when she runs into a parked car. Being a good guy, I run to make sure that she's not injured. She wasn't, but when she sees me, she starts punching me again and screeching about how it's all my fault that she ran into a car. I just walk back home and watch some TV. She never spoke to me again. Story 15. This happened to me a long time ago. 
my best friend was dating the fairly wealthy girl. I asked her to hook me up with a friend. I was hoping to get a rich girlfriend too. I was in the Marine Corps at the time and made about $800 a month before taxes. So I was set up on this blind date. I picked her up at her condo on Newport Beach. The entire condo was owned by her dad. He also owned some exotic auto dealership on PCH. I don't think it's there anymore. She was quite attractive and I thought I had hit a home run. She got in my car and we headed towards dinner. Then she spoke. She said the only thing men were good for was to be a donor. Men were all idiots and wouldn't get anywhere without a woman to tell them what to do. She said her future husband will need to worship the ground she walked on and do everything she said without question. This prattled on for about 15 minutes, about halfway between her place and the restaurant. I knew I didn't want to spend $80 on dinner and drinks with this psycho. So I pulled over into a parking lot, reached across her lap and opened her car door. I looked at her and told her to get the fudge out. I drove off and never heard from her again. My friend's girlfriend had a few words to say to me, though. After I told her what Psycho had said, she understood. Story 16. Once, I met a girl online. She mentioned via texting that she was wanting to pursue a master's degree in biomedical anthropology. I thought, sweet, a girl with a brain, and I like talking about cultural anthropology. Naturally, time came for us to talk on the phone, she insisted. However, she didn't talk. I asked her about her degree, shouldn't talk about it even remotely coherently. I couldn't tell if she was lying about her academic pursuits or just genuinely boring. I told her that I didn't think our conversation was going on anywhere. She defensively insisted that she was a fascinating and interesting person. Who says that anyway? I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt. We decided to meet. Over dinner, she barely talked. She barely looked at me. Conversation was like pulling the teeth from a rabid honey badger with period untitus and heat. After dinner, we get back to my place and I'm ready to call it a night. Sure, she's kind of cute, but at this point I'd rather go read about Tibetan fraternal polyandry than try to talk to this girl anymore. Opting for honesty, I flatly told her that I didn't think it was going to work out. Thanks for letting me take you to dinner, blah blah, etc. She raged. She raised her voice at me and exclaimed, How you could not think that I'm interesting. I'm the most interesting person I know. Look at me. I just stood there and blinked. That might have been the longest sequence of sentences that she'd ever run together. I replied, I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing it. Want to watch Total Recall? Being a Philip K. Banana fan, she replied, sure. So we watched the movie. Then we screwed. At least she made sounds then. Then I never called her again. True facts. Story 17. I was talking to a guy online. He used to be a monk, and I thought that was cool. While taking, he kept mentioning things about his close relationship quirks, and I stupidly ignored them as normal. My friend helped justify them, IDFK, why he was such an enabler. Fast forward a couple weeks, and I decide to meet him. He was attractive, despite disfigured ears. But he turned out to be really creepy. He took the bus about three hours to get to me, brought a giant backpack, and was trying to touch me the whole time. He was trying to put his hand on my leg and telling me to relax. I was really freaked, and my knife was in my purse out of reach. When he went to his pack and laughed about his giant black rubber dong, I was later told this was why he was kicked out of the monk posse he was in. I knew I had to get out. So I texted my friend to be my boss over the phone and call me in urgently. He did, and luckily I got out, but the guy waited in the park until night. He got blocked ASAP, but created new accounts to talk to me up until a couple months ago. Story 18. It was my first year of community of college, and I met a girl on an online dating site. Well, she was a bit heavier than what was pictured, but meh. She was mildly cute, and we were both kind of excited to get going on the date. Fast forward after a comedy and deep conversation over an upscale Chinese joint. It was time to drop her off. Things were going really well. A second date imminent. The mood has been set. We spoke for a bit in the car. Almost one of those, we don't want the night to end moments. Suddenly, we start fooling around. Keep in mind, we are in the car and we're located in somewhat of a mall parking lot. Suddenly, without warning, a security guard's Jeep lights flick on. It was night and you could see it from half a mile away. The car had been running for heat and most of our clothing still intact. So I do the only logical thing and flip it into first and gun it. Unfortunately for me, the windows had fogged quite a bit. My pupils quickly dilated just before impact of the stone. I realized far too late that I was about to smash into a concrete barrier. Ironically, had a stop sign attached to it. She called her parents to come give her a ride, and that was their first impression of me. They didn't want her speaking to me anymore. Story 19. Okay, so this will probably be buried under all the other comments, but I've been waiting to tell this story. I was working at GameStop, which I took way too much pride in at the time, and this cute blonde came in and was looking at the used DVDs. She was trying to decide between season one of Buffy or season one of Angel. Being a huge Joss Whedon fan, I offered my opinion on the matter, and we flirted a bit. I finally got the balls to ask for her number, and surprised she gave it to me. Called her the next day, made plans for dinner. I wake up the day of the date, and can't stop throwing up. Have a stomach bug that is going around, but I decided to tough it out. So I pick her up and ask her where she wants to go. She points out a place across the street. 
It is the dirtiest, most disgusting hole in the wall Mexican place I've ever seen. Trying to be cool about it so I don't say anything and just go with the flow. I order my food, and she orders the most giant burrito I have ever seen. I can't hardly sit up straight because I'm so sick. And this girl starts to devour this burrito like she has never eaten before. Cheese and beans dripping down her face, sour cream falling on the table. It took all of my might not to vomit. Just as I'm about to call it quits, this older woman, about mid 50 hours, and younger man, maybe late 20 hours, come up and start talking to my date. She introduces them as her mom and stepdad. I introduced myself while trying my hardest not to show my WTF face because of the obvious age difference. They decide to join us for dinner, flipping, awkward. Trying to be boyfriend material, I agree, and my date switches sides of the booth and practically sits on my lap. I spent the next 20 minutes listening to her mom talk about how they had to move out of their house because a ghost was haunting them. I put down 20 bucks for my date and nice food and went to the restroom to get away from the crazy. When I came back, the 20 was missing from the table, but the bill was not. I looked around for it, but found it nowhere. I could swore I paid it, but I wasn't about to accuse them of taking it, especially since I wasn't 100% sure I put it there. I should have checked my wallet, but I didn't want to flash cash around the restaurant. So I put $20 down again and made sure I handed it to the waiter on his next pass. Being that I was lost in my head ignoring the mother, it was likely I imagined putting the money there. Finally, the nightmare is over, right? Not quite. We are just about to leave, and the mom asks the husband for his wallet to pay the bill for their huge meal. He delicately explains to her that he is without said wallet, and she replies that she didn't bring her purse. Then it happens. They both slowly look up in me, and much to my disbelief, ask me to pay for their food. I don't know why I did it. Maybe it was because her daughter was hot, or because she was rubbing my thigh after knowing her for like 25 minutes. But I paid it. Forty more dollars. So I finally take her home, and she begs me to hang out longer. But at this point, I just need to get away. I wave and smile from the car and speed the fudge out of the dirty town she lived in. So here's the real kicker. Before the date, I went to the ATM and took out exactly $200 and 20 S. I decide to look in my wallet in the car, knowing there should be $60 missing, 40 for the parents, and 20 for my date. $120 was all that remained. I screamed at the top of my lungs, I did put down the 20! Bad person flipping stole it. I was mad for quite some time, but after I told the story to a few friends, I realized it was pretty funny. I won't go on about it, as it is unlikely anyone will read this far down, but I actually ran into the crazy bad person years later at a party, and the craziness continued. Story 20. While I was working on some project in Vienna, I hooked up in student bar with some Turkish girl, pretty hot, slow with English, but entertaining enough for me to make next move while being drunk. So I asked her out. Since we lived in the same building, we agreed upon watching some movie. I think it was some Adam Sandler comedy, pretty basic American jokes. So she doesn't laugh. Ook. I've tried to ask her if she maybe doesn't understand the movie, but no. She is confident in her English. Well then, Mom. After 1.5 HRS of weirdness, she just ripped her clothes up and started banging me like I was a puppet. At one point, she stops and tells me to remove my necklace. Something for my father, what I wore when he passed away. I asked why, and she told me that I looked like a pimp or a candy dealer. I refused and tried to explain, but no. She furiously left the apartment half, and there I was, half messed up. Next thing you know, she's calling me at my cell and telling me that her husband is in the building and he's coming towards my flat to have a word with me. I almost cow myself, grabbed the knife from a kitchen, closed everything and waited for like half hour. Nothing. Then I got an SMS from her saying that she was joking that her husband is somewhere in Germany still. Not a joke, not in my book. Story 21. The date that I was too dumb to know was a date. I'm about 18 years old at the time and I meet a bunch of girls that are all friends with a good friend of mine. Among them was a beautiful girl, ridiculously out of my league. Therefore, I set my eyes on a more reasonable target, her best friend. A few days later, I receive a call from the hot girl. Texting was not yet the mainstream communication way, believe it or not. Telling me she and a few Otaire people were watching a movie at her place, and I should come. I figured the friend I set my eyes on would most likely be there. When I get there, it's Jay Sut, me, and her. She's looking super hot and says it turns out everyone canceled and it's just her and me. She had rented some retarded horror flick and kept the whole night clinging to my arm. At the end of the movie, the mood is perfect. She's clearly into me and everything. At that moment, I open my mouth and ask something along the lines of, so that friend of yours is pretty great. Does she have anyone in her life? I had been completely oblivious to all the signs. She played it cool, and she set me up with the Otaire girl, who I dated for about a week and turned out to be some sort of psycho control bad person. I later learned that the movie night was meant to be a date. Basically, screw girls and their subtlety and screw the idiot brain of an 18-year-old dude. Story 22. There was this girl I knew from being a customer where I used to work. She worked at a restaurant across the street and would often stop by for smoothies on her walk home. 
She lived very close by. I was friendly with her, but didn't know her well enough for it not to be creepy to ask her out. She eventually stops coming in, and I think of her as the one that got away. About four years later, I recognize her in one of my classes. I find out she quit when she became a vegan, the restaurant industry grossing her out. It was a three-hour class, so there was a 15-minute break in the middle of each one. We would talk during the break, and I got to know her better. Eventually, I just blurted out, so you want to get dinner sometime, when we were walking to our cars after class. She said sure and gave me her number. I worked full-time, so I usually only had one night a week I could go out with classes and Bill's games. After asking her on about eight different days which couldn't work out for her, many of which she canceled last minute, I sent her an email saying that if she was just being nice that I could handle it and we didn't have to go out. She calls me and we set a firm date immediately. The day comes, and I meet her at a fancy restaurant downtown, which I made sure had vegan entrees. I show up 15 minutes early just to be safe because my car is a piece of cow. She's already there, seated at the bar, drinking a Manhattan. I quickly find out that she is hammered and a terrible conversationalist for spans of time exceeding three minutes. She's constantly one-upping me and interrupting me mid-sentence. I try to tell her funny stories and interject onto her stories, but she keeps on going off on crazy tangents. I went to the bathroom just because she was bugging the cow out of me and I needed to stop and think. When I come back, the food is there. I got sushi, and she dares herself to eat my glob of wasabi that comes with it. It was one of those really awkward moments in life. She was doing it thinking it would be hilarious, I guess. But it was just awkward, and I didn't know what to say. She starts sweating. A lot. She's almost done with her second Manhattan when I comment that she seems pretty drunk for someone who drinks Manhattans. I would figure that people who choose so strong a drink would be able to hold them better. After admitting that she slammed a bunch of shots before coming to meet me out, she starts talking about her messed up up childhood and how much she hates her dad. She then tells me that she has a chronic heart disease and that drinking makes it worse. And that's why she had to cancel so many of our previous dates. Oh, I originally thought that was nonsense, but one of my friends from work confirmed this. They went to high school together. To top it all off, she tells me that she has been seeing this other guy, but she didn't want to cancel our date in case things didn't work out with him. I didn't know where else to put this, but I later find out her sister has a pet squirrel. I'm having a terrible time, but I stick with my original plan to walk across the street with her for coffee and dessert. At this point, it isn't to get to know her better, but to give her some chance to sober up. All throughout this, my best friend is texting me comically romantic things to say to her, the one thing that kept me sane. Also, I just remembered that for the weeks leading up to the date, I was in a bidding war with her ex-boyfriend in this stupid Facebook app called Friend Zoo or something. You bought your friends and put them in your zoo, but other people could buy them off of you. He seemed psychotic, and she broke up with him after finding out that he cheated on her serving in Iraq. I still check up on her from time to time on Facebook because my friend asked me after I told him about the date who would live longer, her or Abe Vigoda. So far, she's still alive, so my prediction of her beating out Vigoda is holding strong. Story 23. I tried getting a date with this guy I had a crush on for over 10 years. We were going to meet up at a bar near his apartment in the city. I'd never even really talked to him, minus the few awkward times I showed up at his work, ice cream parlor, and asked for my favorite flavor of ice cream, with a beet red face. We agreed to meet up. It came off casual like, oh, I'm just in the area. But really, I had planned it for weeks, months even. He said he was just staying and catching up on some reading, but he'd meet me. I was so nervous, I was shaking downing beers to take the edge off before he showed up. I ran through a 1,000 different scenarios what it would be like to finally talk to him and show him I wasn't a total idiot or very awkward. Though it didn't help that on the way into the city it poured for the, like, five minutes, I was actually out on the streets. So my clothes were drenched, my makeup was a wreck, and my hair was a frizzy afro. But I didn't care. I had to see him. I couldn't even consider having a boyfriend in high school until after this guy had graduated and had gone to college. He was a grade above me. He showed up with his girlfriend, Edit for spelling. I didn't beat my own face red, nor did anyone beat it red for me. You clever cats, you. Story 24. I had a few awesome dates with a guy I met online at Geek2Geek and decided it was safe to tell him where I lived. I invited him over, and we were enjoying the start of what was supposed to be an evening of movie watching and talking when he suddenly bolted up from his seat. He then started walking around my apartment, snapping his fingers and oddly shuffling his feet around and swaying a bit. He continued with this crazy person dance for about half an hour. I was wondering WTH was going on when he ran over to me, gave me a quick peck and said he had to go. I asked him to stay a bit longer, but he refused. I was pretty disappointed. Did I do something wrong? Uh, things seemed to be going well. We did continue to go out again, but it wasn't until a year later that he filled me in what really was going on. Apparently, the urge to rid his bowels of the demons within hit him in a major way mid-evening. Starting to become a bit flagellant, he was trying his darndest to cover his emissions with the snapping and swaying around. When he couldn't take it anymore, he flew at the speed of light to a Denny's about a mile down the road and dropped a bomb in their bathroom. 
He was too shy to desecrate my toilet in my small one-bedroom apartment. I don't blame him. Five years later, we still laugh about it, oftentimes snapping and dancing around the room like idiots, desecrating the toilets in our apartment with bold, unabashed fervor. Story 25. Way back in the day, met a dude on MySpace. We chatted online for a while and decided to meet up for our first date. He took me to Flipping KFC, where we met several of his male friends. He was an average-looking dude, nothing to write home about and kind of short. However, one of his friends was a hottie and giving me eyeballs. I'm trying to be nice and not notice this and give my full attention to the date. All his friends are like woo-hooing and congratulating him on getting a girl making me assume this was out of the norm. Things are going okay, but then he starts asking me lots of questions about church and what my religious beliefs are. Being pretty agnostic, I kind of just gave him half-peach answers and tried to change the subject. After our poor fried chicken gang assault date, he took me home. In the parking lot, he reached under the seat of his truck and pulled out a copy of The Purpose Driven Life. He said, I really like you a lot, but I don't like that you're not a Christian, so I got you this. So I'm already out the door ready to call this a night when he whips around the side of the truck and pushes the book into my hands. Then he proceeds to attempt a sloppy kiss attack, which I escaped with a quickness. I said goodnight and went inside. He texted me several times that night, to which I responded, I don't think we have much in common, and there would not be a second date. He did not like this very much and proceeded to text me on the dot, like a flipping cuckoo clock every 15 minutes for the next few weeks. Story 26. I'm not the best at getting the girl, but honestly, I'm a 19-year-old community college student who works at a video game store, has no car, and still lives with his mom. Anyway, I tend to not really worry about it, because I used to try hard to impress girls, and it just got to the point where I intellectually said, fudge it, and just moved on. Kind of a, if someone comes along and it happens, it happens. Mentality. Now, my best friend since the 3RD grade tells me a friend of his saw my Facebook pictures and thought I was cute. He proceeds to text me a picture of her and told me, you two should meet. Well, why the hell not, right? So he gives me her number, I call her, and we set up a date on a Friday at a pizza place. We go on the date and everything seems completely normal. We have a lot in common and I thought something might come of this, but oh dear dead God, how wrong I was. We finish dinner and I take her home and say goodnight. She then proceeds to drop off all contact with me for no good reason. I wasn't completely heartbroken or anything. More like whatever, another one down. Four months later, still no contact. I'm chilling at home, just getting ready for work and uh, the doorbell rings. Through the peephole, I see a familiar face. I start thinking, how in the freaking fudge did she find where I live? I don't answer the door due to being half and just getting out of the shower. She then proceeds to go ape cow on my door, like pounding, screaming, punching, kicking, and I swear once she might have even headbutted the flipping thing. I think this because my door was metal-like and there were dents flipping everywhere, including one that was about where her head would be. Anyway, she calls my store and asks for me. Again, no idea how she knew which store I worked at and tries to rope me into some tirade about why she broke off contact, and that she's sorry for almost bashing my god oh no door down. I knew this would go on for hours, so I made some cow about the store being busy and hung up without waiting for a response. I don't know what I did to make her secretly want to terminate me, but it gets worse. She called me about 10 p.m. the same day and asked me to meet her in the park. Now this park had barely any lights, was nowhere near any kind of houses, and the cops barely ever go there. It's called the dealer's grounds because literally every is there selling their cow. I should have just said no, but curiosity piqued me. So I meet her by the swings, because swings are still flipping awesome, despite being 19. And she calmly explains that she dropped conversation because she went to a mental hospital for months. Again, this is where I should have noped and ran, but I was slightly interested in the rest of the story. Mostly why she saw my front door needed to have the cow beat out of it. Doors aren't cheap, damn it. Anyway, she says she found my name in the phone book and called our house, but the line was disconnected, which it was. So she just went to the address she found after a lot of googing. When I didn't answer, she told me she thought I hated her for not talking to me for months and wasn't trying to break the door down, but rather she was punishing herself for being a flipping idiot, her exact word. I was silent for a little, then said everything was fine and not to worry about it, but I don't really want a relationship at the moment. Who the fudge would with that? She then throws herself on me like a rabid flipping zombie and tries to kiss me. I push her away and get off the ground and start walking very fast away from her. She tackles me, and I mean tackles me, to the ground, and she pulls something out of her coat pocket. It was a flipping syringe. Full of what? I have no flipping clue. I wasn't going to stick around to find out, so this is the one time I hit a girl in my entire life. So I falcon paunch the bad person in the face and shove her off me yet again. I then book it back to my house, never saw her again. I'm guessing she gave up?